Science fiction has become the new mythology by which people are interpreting UFOs, but many people are more biblically inclined and won't believe in any of the alien-based interpretations of UFOs. These people were a threat to the devil's grand alien deception. This is because they would likely figure out that the UFO slash abduction phenomena is spiritual in nature and being caused by demons. If a large amount of people became vocal that UFOs are a spiritual phenomenon caused by demons, then the devil's plan could backfire because they would then be viewed as proof of a spiritual world, thereby inadvertently leading people towards God. To counter this threat, the devil then forked his UFO mythology in what could be one of the most cunning deceptions that he has ever accomplished. In order to deceive these people, he made an alternate seemingly biblical mythology regarding UFOs. By recycling and repurposing an old theory based on Jewish myths, he created the modern Nephilim hybrid theory. The proponents of this theory cite the apocryphal Book of Enoch and Genesis 6-4 to support their claims. This theory has deceived a stunning amount of people. Not only does this theory cause people to misinterpret UFOs, but it also doubles as a false end times worldview. Many people believe that the UFO phenomenon isn't spiritual and being caused by fallen angels, which are usually referred to as demons, but is instead being caused by something they call Nephilim hybrids, which according to them are biological humanoid beings who are the result of human women having intercourse with fallen angels. They believe these Nephilim hybrids are flying advanced spacecraft that they built with their superior intelligence. The Nephilim hybrid theory comes from a particular misinterpretation of Genesis 6-4. In some Bible translations of Genesis 6-4, a Hebrew word, usually translated as giants, is instead transliterated as Nephilim. The Bible mentions giants a number of times, but in 2 Samuel 21-20 and 1 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 6, the Bible speaks of giants who have six fingers. The straightforward conclusion is that some men mentioned in the Bible were much larger than others, with a six-fingered genetic anomaly. This simple conclusion makes sense, because even to this day, there are extremely tall individuals, like the seven-foot-six NBA player Taco Fall. Also, there are still families who carry the genetics for six working fingers. The Nephilim hybrid theorists reject this straightforward interpretation and instead start down a path of increasingly wild and unbelievable conclusions. They conclude that these references to giants and the references to Nephilim are actually describing half-human, half-fallen angel hybrids who are part of the devil's plan to genetically corrupt humanity. Take a look at a translation of Genesis 6-4 that uses the term Nephilim. They claim that the sons of God in Genesis 6-4 refer to angels that fell from grace because they wanted to have sexual relations with women. The Nephilim, according to the theory, are their hybrid children who were famous and mighty heroes. People have believed variations of this theory for a long time, including some saints, like Saint Justin Martyr. But the modern variation of this theory is the most deceptive and cunning version the devil has ever promulgated. It wreaks theological havoc on Christianity. It replaces our spiritual battle, described in Ephesians 6.12, with a battle against demonic, flesh-and-blood half-breeds. It rewrites the Old Testament as a battle between humans and non-humans and it promotes a false end-times worldview involving an apocalyptic UFO invasion. The modern version of the theory is as follows. Anyone who has a Nephilim hybrid ancestor is automatically damned and unable to achieve salvation, since they are not truly human and thus Jesus did not die for them. Listen to this clip of Dennis Lindsay, a Nephilim hybrid theorist, on The Jim Backer Show. Why did he have these giant beings trying to wipe them out? And it's all about he's out to destroy God's creation and his whole plan of redemption and contaminate the human race because Jesus came not to save hybrids or, or non-human beings or fallen angels or Lucifer. He came to save human beings. And to have According to the theory, demons, the spiritual entities that possess people and haunt certain houses, 
are not fallen angels, but are instead the spirits of these biological humanoid Nephilim hybrids, who've died. Fallen angels, according to them, are something different. Here's a clip from a very popular video done by Trey Smith promoting this theory. As you can see, this video has over 6 million views. Enoch is not just talking about a set of very dark fallen beings and producing their own hybrid children. It goes a lot deeper than that. What he's telling you is that these fallen angels which produced the Nephilim, neither completely angel or completely human, but something in between. The thing is when they die, their, their souls come out from the race of giants that came from this union, gave way to a brood of evil spirits. And, it's, and those are the foul spirits of the earth, the demons. The Nephilim die, they become or get added to the number of demons. According to these theorists, anyone with Nephilim hybrid blood is unable to achieve salvation, and that was the real reason for Noah's flood. It was a genetic cleansing. Here's a clip from Tom Horn, one of the biggest promoters of the Nephilim hybrid theory. In order, remember, God makes everything, and then he says each kind is to reproduce only after its own kind. When the watchers came down, they were literally creating a replacement form of proto-human as well as genetically modifying animals, genetically modifying crops, and that's why God has to send a flood. It, 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 by the way, their plan to cut off the birth line of the Messiah would have worked had it not been for Genesis 9, but Noah mm. found mm -hmm. grace in the eyes of the Lord. Right. Thank and God. Noah was perfect. Tanyum, his DNA was not corrupted. But Genesis 6-4 says these Nephilim were also here after the flood. Because of this, the Nephilim hybrid theorists speculate that somehow other fallen angels, or perhaps the same ones, again had children with human women and created a new race of biological demon men who were unable to achieve salvation. How many places do you think in the Bible they talk about the Nephilim or the giants? Well, Is um, it, it's really in what, the what Bible. They, oh, I mean, people, people say, why are you talking about this stuff? Because it's the now time. Here's 21 stories, and you, the, I don't know if you want those, you can pass them out, but um, some of these are in his book. These are some of there that are not in the book. These are only in the United States. I have literally dozens and dozens of newspaper headlines from the 19th century and the wow. 18th century, where here in the United States, uh, university level, archeological work was being done, where they were digging up the giants. You published some of those in your book too. Uh, where they were digging up the giants here in early America that had been wiped out during a catastrophic flood, they say, and <laughs> swept underneath the mounds. And uh, uh, of course, the Smithsonian swooped in because it tinkers with their theories about evolution, right? They give evidence of giants being found in ancient civilizations around the world. They point this out because according to them, these giants were half human, half fallen angel, demon men. If they thought about this part logically, they would realize that if all these legends of giants are talking about Nephilim hybrids, which is what they're saying, then an enormous portion of humanity, perhaps even everyone living today, would have at least one giant Nephilim hybrid ancestor and thus be automatically damned, according to them. This is because giant men would not have a problem finding a female companion. But this makes one wonder. According to the modern Nephilim hybrid theorists, where are the Nephilim hybrids hiding today? They don't usually have an explanation on how this came to be, but they conclude that the flesh and blood Nephilim hybrids are piloting advanced craft that they built with their superior intelligence. According to them, these Nephilim hybrid spacecraft are responsible for the UFOs seen in the sky and the abductions people experience. They theorize that the Nephilim hybrids are abducting people and taking their sperm and ova in order to genetically breed more Nephilim hybrids, thereby expanding their army currently hiding in their advanced spacecrafts. Here, Trey Smith uses a clip from the movie Fire in the Sky to illustrate this theory. Now, it is always eggs and semen that things like this are after, right? 
He's promoting the idea that the Nephilim hybrids are piloting the UFOs and using people's sperm and ova to create a new race of Nephilim hybrids. This part of their theory plays into their false end times worldview. This is because they believe that near the end of the world, there'll be a pseudo alien invasion, but these creatures will really be Nephilim hybrids pretending to be aliens to deceive humanity. They believe that when Jesus said that the last days will be like the days of Noah, he meant that human fallen angel hybrids will return. So many of them are waiting for a UFO invasion to bring in the end of the world. Steve Quayle promotes this idea in his book. In his book, Aliens and Fallen Angels, Offspring of the Gods, he has parts of the book that are a fictionalized future history, so he gives the reader a story version of what he thinks will happen in the future. This part of his book is very telling and really captures what these Nephilim hybrid theorists believe. Here's an excerpt from his book. Quote, the cherub in the mothership carefully rearranged his countenance, hiding his leathery wings and changing his four faces into one human-like countenance. That should fool them, Satan told himself, flashing a practiced smile at the mirror. There was a knock at the door. The crowds are waiting for your appearance, Lord, Techno announced. Are the Cyclopses ready? Yes, Lord. Everything is in place, a demon whispered in Satan's ear. People of Earth, we come in peace, bringing a new age of tranquility and well-being to our brothers and sisters on your planet. Tom Horn and Chris Putnam, the authors of Exo Vaticana, also promote this false end times worldview. They think that the Vatican is preparing to disclose extraterrestrials, or ETs, which would really be Nephilim hybrids posing as aliens. This is a clip from Coast to Coast with George Norrie. Does the Vatican think that ET presence uh, is going to come soon, or disclosure, or anything like that, Chris? Absolutely. I mean, if you look on the internet, it is full of those kind of speculations. There is a meme in the culture right now, uh, a rumor, you know, everywhere, that the Vatican is about to announce disclosure. They think the Vatican is going to play a key role, bringing in a pseudo-alien invasion. They point to the fact that many of the, quote, Jesuits are writing new theology based on aliens. But they that some of these Jesuits believe that official disclosure is imminent. And furthermore, they're creating some very strange theology. And by that I mean we're talking about Opus Dei level theologians who are writing papers now for the Pope's uh, uh, Academy in Rome, for other institutions of the Roman Catholic Church that are to be used for creating new dogma. And some of the stuff they're talking about uh, people are going to be blown away by some of the documents that Guy Cosmonogo gave me. And when he's talking about how the world is soon going to look to the aliens for their salvation and the arrival of alien saviors, and I pressed him on some of these questions. I said, well, can, can you give me an example? I mean, what are you talking about? Is this something, you know, as a brother, you're a Jesuit, you're a brother, uh, um, that you would find in the Bible somewhere? And believe it or not, to prove Prove his point that there are alien saviors who once before visited the earth and were advanced in their technology and gave the secrets of heaven to mankind. To prove that point, he pointed me to Genesis chapter 6 and, and literally wrote about the Nephilim. He, in his response to me, talking about the Nephilim, the heroes that were of old, the warriors of renown. But their whole theory is wrong. The current Vatican and the quote Jesuits are just heretical and totally liberal. They aren't true Jesuits at all. So they say all kinds of stupid stuff. And Francis is not a pope at all. He's really an anti-pope. That's why he says so many wild things. Like saying he would quote baptize aliens. People like Tom Horn and Chris Putnam misinterpret statements like this and conclude that the Vatican is aware of a coming UFO invasion. Is there a connection between the Vatican being out there talking about aliens and this final pope? In other words, is something getting ready to come down from the heavens, something that this pope might even recognize or uh, sanction? No. 
This is the wrong conclusion. Francis is just a heretic who says all kinds of false and unbiblical things. It isn't some pseudo-alien Nephilim hybrid conspiracy. By the way, many of these Nephilim hybrid theorists believe in more fictional creatures than just human fallen angel hybrids. They often believe in something called a pre-edemic world. This is a heretical idea that claims that there were biological humans or human-like creatures before Adam. Here's Steve Quayle, a well-known Nephilim hybrid theorist, saying that he believes God recreated the world in Genesis. When we talk about the stuff we're going to talk about, we're going to go right into the pre-Adamic. Nothing makes people get more mad than when you explain to them that God recreated the earth in Genesis 1, 1, 1, 2. Here's a clip of another Nephilim hybrid theorist named Timothy Alberino. Very possible that before the human race came into being, there was a very sophisticated, advanced, complicated um, civilization that existed on this planet. They even sometimes believe that the fallen angels had relations with animals, creating monster creatures. Not just the giants, but also all of the host of other sentient entities that came as, as a result of the fallen angels having intercourse with animals. Once people start down this Nephilim hybrid path, they often start believing in a huge amount of non-biblical science fiction. So there's a lot of creatures under the earth, on the surface of the earth, up in the atmosphere, possibly on other planets. Here's another clip of Timothy Alberino saying, in a long-winded way, that he thinks that UFOs are Nephilim hybrids piloting advanced craft. So. You have all these creatures, many of which I think are many times, were many times smarter, more intelligent than humans because they had their origins. Um, they had components of um, um, uh, angelic genes. That whole mess that happened in the pre-flood world, excluding the possibility of stuff happening in the pre-Adamic world, okay, and excluding the possibility of something strange genetically going on with Cain. Put those two things aside. Just deal with these fallen angels and what they did. That whole mess is, I believe, the prime origin for a lot of the, 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 the little things flying around in, in, in saucers and in, in other craft. Um, it's not exclusively the origin, but, it's, but I think it's primarily the origin the theory is unbiblical science fiction. That's why St. Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas both rejected the Nephilim hybrid theory. Here's an excerpt of the Summa Theologica, where St. Thomas cites St. Augustine to dismiss the hybrid theory. Quote, But God's holy angels could not fall in such a fashion before Noah's flood. Hence by the sons of God are to be understood the sons of Seth, who were good. Well, by the daughters of men, the scripture designates those who sprang from the race of Cain. Nor is it to be wondered at the giants should be born of them. For they were not all giants, albeit there were many more before than after Noah's flood. The Bible does say that there were giants, and I believe that. I don't think it's allegorical language. But the existence of giants doesn't mean that they were hybrids. It's simply the case that for some genetic reason, certain people used to be much taller. The Bible even explicitly states that the Nephilim were men. Quote, they, the Nephilim, were the mighty heroes of old, the famous men. They were men, not demon men, not hybrids, just giant men. So that's what the Nephilim are, exactly what the Bible says they are, giant men. This should not be surprising. A creationist website points out that many giant versions of modern animals have been found in fossils, like beavers, turtles, snakes, and frogs. So it makes sense that humans could give birth to giants, since other creatures did. In fact, according to legend, St. Christopher, patron saint of travelers, was a giant. Blessed Jacobus de Vargine in the Golden Legend wrote, quote, Christopher was a Canaanite by birth, a man of prodigious size. 
he was twelve feet tall. So St. Christopher was a giant, and he became a saint. That by itself is strong evidence against the Nephilim hybrid theory. Steve Quayle also documented some more recent giants in one of his books. This guy was 8 foot 8 inches. This individual was 9 foot 4 inches tall. This woman was 7 feet tall. So the biblical giants were just giant humans. Nephilim hybrid theorists also constantly point to certain extremely large elongated skulls and claim that it's proof of the Nephilim hybrids. Before I talk more about this argument, I'd like to point out that they're asserting, based on nothing, that elongated skulls are proof of Nephilim hybrids. But none of their sources even claim that the Nephilim were normal-sized people with elongated skulls. Genesis 6-4 doesn't talk about elongated skulls. The Book of Enoch doesn't talk about elongated skulls. Yet, according to them, elongated skulls prove Nephilim hybrids, even though None of their texts even claim that the Nephilim had elongated skulls. Here's a clip from Nephilim hybrid theorist, Trey Smith, talking about the skulls. Now there are a lot of tribes that have done varieties of things, their bodies to achieve a number of different effects, including the binding of the skull to produce this elongated shape on the back of the head. There are some significant differences, however, between even the best of clearly modified skulls, like this skull on the screen here, and skulls that appear significantly larger and much more naturally formed than that. He's claiming that skull binding is unable to create such a large skull. On top of this, they point to another supposed anomaly in the skulls. But it's not just that they absolutely have to be enormously massive. There's another difference on just the skulls themselves, which is even more puzzling than that. Every human skull on every single human being should have these two plates in the back of the skull that are clearly divided between the two of them by this crease running towards the back of the head. This elongated skull, however, is not like that with the crease and the two plates in the back. This skull has one long crease, very defined here, a crease coming back this way, and one very large skull cap. Binding a little baby's head should most certainly not change the genetic bone structure. The cultures that created these elongated skulls achieved the result with head binding, a technique used to massively deform a human skull. Although groups of humans can have genetic variations, Trey's claim about the genetics of the bone structure being different is not true. A contributor on a creationist website pointed out that the skulls have all the normal human structures, but due to deformation, they're just in a different place. To say that these skulls are proof of human fallen angel half-breeds is a desperate attempt to prove their foregone conclusion regarding their Nephilim hybrid theory. The Nephilim hybrid theory is just folklore, combined with a misunderstanding of now mostly extinct genetic variations.